do you know those moments where we do things and go like, why did I really do that? Well, behavior is something that is not so trivial, right? Sometimes you are not so sure what you even will be doing tomorrow, right? Or next hour or in five minutes. We all know that, right? There are moments where you think you are going to do this way and you're going to do it that way. So behavior is, I think we can agree on that, quite complex. And one of the things that I was wondering is, how does it actually work? effectively and what do we need to do to have an impact so these are the questions that I have on my mind since kind of ages and I decided to dive into that field from a few different perspectives and try to integrate those to generate a new understanding so the first interesting perspective was the area of business and management and economics where I honestly must say I learned some standards I learned some ideas on how the things might be that we decide to learn about processes and structure and the basics of organizations theory, which is a good basis, but many of the questions were still open. So I decided to go for another topic, which would be the area of applied neuroscience, where you look in the brain of people and try to ask yourself the question, what is going on up there that makes you behave the way you do? So looking in the area of neuroscience is very resourceful for generating answers to many questions about what we do. And many myths that we have from psychology, many myths that we just have as superstitions, can be resolved if you take a close look about how people really behave based on what is happening in their heads. However, just understanding how people tick, just understanding their brain, is just not enough. You need something more to get a comprehensive picture. It's valuable to know how people behave. However, if there's one person here, there's another person there. And once one person decides, I'm going to do things differently tomorrow, it might affect the other person, if it's a colleague, for example, and they might get annoyed, they might get angry, and you might get feedback that then stops you again in your change. So. Next layer that we have is the area of social complexity. How do we behave among our teams and what are the patterns that are emerging from that individuals interacting in a social manner? To understand that, uh, neuroscience alone is not really the thing to go for. You need some more things and I decided to look into an area that most people do not look in, which is the actual chaos theory or complex systems theory. Because it turns out, a social system is a complex system. There are so many feedback loops. One does this and that makes two others behave and they react back. So this is really a highly complex issue. And my hope was that complexity theory would shine a light on the question on how does that actually work? How is that behavior really unfolding on the level of a team? How do they stabilize? How do they change? And how do they also maybe produce some things like conflict in those teams? Or how do they produce other cultural properties like harmony, like cooperation, like shared mood or fun, for example? So the first thing was using complex systems theory to take the neuroscience perspective on the next level, on the team perspective. However, it's not only teams working in an organization, right? There's many teams and those teams are organized in department and those departments are organized in organizational entities and those entities are steered by some other entity. And all of those entities are affecting each other backwards and forwards. All the interactions are working all the time on an individual level. It's always people talking with each other, right? However, 
the cultures that we see in any team, in any organizational entity or wherever might affect how that interaction might happen. If we take that whole picture, the teams and the teams of teams and the teams of teams of teams, so the whole organizational level, we see habits emerging that those people share on a social level. We see culture emerging, like the typical thought processes, the typical things that get attention, the shared social habits, the things that you just do here this way. Sometimes where people do not consciously are really aware those things where people are most not even aware that this is how you do things. And only when you breach the rule, then attention is drawn to it. So what I tried is uh, setting out that individual model on how we behave using neuroscience and then scale that up over the steps to a whole organization's level. My goal was to help leaders and entrepreneurs steer their organizations better. And that specifically in challenging situation. For example, when there's any kind of large change happening. And that can be change of the market, that can be change of products, that can be innovation, that can be change happening due to any kind of clash of cultures, like you typically see that in any kind of mergers, for example. Understanding the complexity of the system and generating smart solutions on how to influence the employee's attitude towards the change, enabling them to go through the uncertainty of the process, through the stress of the process, sometimes even with a status where they do not know if they will be employed there for long, and making that in a manner that the organization will strive and the change will happen to everybody's benefit. This has been the core focus of my work since roughly a decade now. I've been helping many organizations from very small growing startups that with an impressive speed of growth have real trouble to set up a culture in the first place to really huge multinational worldwide brand corporations that typically had older structures that wouldn't be so sufficient anymore to their perception and wanted to change the old structures and make sure that more innovation would happen. And finally, with teams where some mergers, some external change or some innovation would create the need for people to change on a large scale. So if you are interested in how the individual behavior is connected to the teams and the organization's behavior, how culture emerges, how organizations can be led effectively and how, can, how leaders pragmatically can help their employees to go through the change in a more easeful and more light and more successful and more rewarding manner, then I'm looking forward to go into the discussion with you about that. Also, please feel free to leave your questions, to leave your comments in the comment box below and I appreciate every like and share of this video. Thank you very much.